The Koffler Gallery is proud to present the world premiere of a heart-wrenching and fascinating exhibition, The Synagogue at Babinyar, Turning the Nightmares of Evil into a Shared Dream of Good. Opening on the eve of Yom HaShoah, April 17th, and running until November, the multidisciplinary exhibition tells the bittersweet story of the Babinyar Synagogue, which stands on the grounds of the first large-scale massacre of the Holocaust in 1941. Experience the full historical, political, artistic, and spiritual context of this incredible monument for the first time. The exhibition is free of charge. To learn more, visit CofflerArts.org. Come in, come in. Thank you. Welcome to my home. So nice that you're here. Thank you so much for having me. And my whole goal is to find out everything I need to know so that we can hopefully find your husband. Okay. You're, you're up for that? Yeah. <laughs> That's the okay. voice of Cindy Senny. She's a Canadian woman now living in Jerusalem, and you see her meeting for the first time with a professional Orthodox Jewish matchmaker. Their interview session was being filmed in Israel as part of the new hit Netflix reality TV series called Jewish matchmaking. The first season just debuted on March 3rd, and maybe some of you have already started to watch it. The show's already in the top 10 most watched Netflix shows in Israel and in Canada, too, which pleases Senny so much because the 28 year old did spend most of her life in Thornhill, Ontario, growing up with her parents and three older siblings before she moved to Israel four years ago. Seni is a York University graduate. Afterwards, she worked for the Israeli consulate in Toronto doing public relations. Now she works for an Israeli charity that helps disabled veterans of the IDF. Seni describes herself as a modern Orthodox Jew who keeps the Sabbath and keeps kosher and wants to find someone who likes to travel and do tikkun olam. But for me, one of the big turnoffs is ego. Like, there's a place for one diva, and it's me. So, <laughs> Sandy was engaged once, but the wedding was called off. And so when the producers of the dating show reached out to her to join the cast, she said yes. I'm looking for someone who's willing to not just, you know, say he's committed, but, but really is committed. To be willing to commit. Because I'm, I, I really don't want to waste my time. My dad sends me these messages. They're not really, it's kind of joking, but not really. But he'll be like, Cindy, it's time to think about your future. Your, your, <laughs> your internal clock is going. I'm like, thanks, Dad. I know. The premise of the show is that to find Mr. Wright or Mrs. Wright, the cast uses the services of a celebrity Orthodox Jewish matchmaker named Aliza Ben Shalom, who claims she has arranged 200 successful marriages. The show was filmed last summer, and it didn't bother Senny too much to go out on dates with five cameras following their every move because she's a social media influencer in her other life and is used to living in the spotlight. She isn't revealing yet whether she did find a husband, but since the show dropped a week ago, she said she's been flooded with propositions. And the reality is that I'm mostly getting um, like dads and moms sending me messages like, oh, you're such a sweetheart, and, and we would love to have you for my son. I'm Ellen Besner, and this is what Jewish Canada sounds like for Thursday, May the 11th, 2023. Welcome to the CJN Daily, a podcast of the Canadian Jewish News, sponsored by Metropia. <music> Now, Netflix has previously showcased the ritualized dating scene of ultra-Orthodox Jews in TV series including Shtisel and also Unorthodox, but this time they're pointing the lens at a much broader range of Jews from diverse backgrounds. There's a Reform Jew of color and an ultra-Orthodox man who wears the black hat and lots of flavors in between, including Cindy Senny, with one set of ancestors who were expelled from Arab lands and the others who survived the Holocaust. She's used matchmakers before, but this time it appears she's found the one she trusts. Cindy Senny joins me now from her apartment in Jerusalem. Great to meet you too. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for reaching out. We should be full disclosure. You reached out to us based on your knowledge of Canadian Jewish uh, media <laughs> when you worked in Toronto with the uh, Israeli consulate back in the day. Yeah, exactly. And so... Um, that was actually wonderful. We were watching here. It's one of the most popular shows. But we are speaking as Israel is now under attack uh, with rockets. But you are in Jerusalem, so it's a little bit less 
uh, tents at the moment, right where you are right as we speak, right? That's right. So today we had about uh, th- over 300 rockets coming into southern and central uh, Israel. So it's Jerusalem is always a little bit on the side because, you know, it, it's kind of a different uh, area and they're not sure whether they want to send there because of its high, uh, you know, Muslim population. Um, so for on my side, thank God, it's been relatively quiet, but we never know when when stuff might happen. Right. And so your your Netflix series is playing out all around the world, very popular. During these very turbulent times, also the attack uh, in Jerba the other day. Right. How do people sort of in Israel, are they watching it or are they busy with surviving? <laughs> so uh, Israel has a very interesting uh, sort of atmosphere and culture when it comes to these types of things. So even specifically with Engriba, with the synagogue in, in Jelba. So my family comes from, I have part of my family that comes from Jelba from the, and has lived most of their, you know, for thousands of, of years in that synagogue. And so it's, uh, but Israel is very good with kind of, we face these challenges all the time and we can't just stop living. So they kind of just, you know, they get, they go to the beach and then they run to the shelter, which is literally, there's a video circling about this this morning. They they go to the shelter, they go back on the beach, like, what are you going to do? And, and life has to keep moving and it has to go on. So, uh, but we've had really good uh, response to the show and it was number three in there in Israel. So I, people are watching it. I want to explore that a little more. Yeah. You were mentioning in the show that dating in Israel is quote unquote fun <laughs> and you put it, you know, people can't see it on the uh, podcast, but they can see it on the video with, with quotation marks, fun. Is part of it yes. living on the edge and never knowing the next day and that all sort of plays into the background of how people date? 100%. So I think that's one of the main things about dating in Israel is that people live each day as it's their last. So a lot of the times they're, you know, they're they're kind of out of it. So when you're looking for something that's a little bit more committed and, and you're looking for something long term, they're like, we'll see how it goes, you know, one day at a time. And it really plays into the culture of dating because they just really don't think about that long term. They're just thinking about today. Well, in your own case, you've come uh, spilled, you know, spilled the tea, as they say about on your show about your own journey. And I wonder whether become becoming more orthodox and using Shad Khanim, Shad to, uh, to to find somebody who's seemingly very serious. They're not just in it for the swipes, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, I remember, you know, one of the to, to be on the show, uh, you have to go through a series of process and a series of questions, uh, you know, just like anything else. And uh, I remember one of the producers said something quite funny to me. He's like, he said, you know, I understand why you can't find a, long, a husband to commit. He's like, I can't even get Israelis to commit to this questionnaire. So how does using the services of a matchmaker now make sense? Because it's not the first time I'm, I'm told that you've gone to one. But yes. in terms of the show, how did it make sense to you to try this? So the first time that I had gone to a matchmaker, I hadn't even gone through, I didn't even finish the process because I was already annoyed, quote unquote, uh, by the matchmaker's kind of request and, and, and whatnot. So I, I, I had just gone through the profile and then I was like, no, no, this isn't for me. Um, but this time I I said to myself, listen, if, if, if I'm going to try this, it might as well be something, it might as well be on Netflix. And it might as well be something that's going to be, you know, if they, if anyone can find me a husband, it's definitely going to be Netflix. That's that's kind of how I was thinking about it. Um, but I I really did like the sort of the system of it and the kind of trying it out because it's just it's a much more serious process. And it's something that's a lot more, you know, your veto. The guy is, is you, when you go on the dating apps, you have no idea who you're going out with. Uh, you know, he could be some random person off the street and you can be like 50 years old. But this is kind of a process where the matchmaker knows him. She knows his family. She's gotten to speak to him and she can tell if something's wrong, something's not right. Uh, So that's what I liked about it. And in the show, it shows you only had a couple of dates with one guy. What happened to the list of the other ones? Was there some circumstances why you couldn't see anyone else because of when it was filmed? Yeah, so uh, unfortunately we filmed during, it was still COVID at times and everyone had to get COVID tests and, uh, and a, two of my dates that I was supposed to go out with just had COVID, so it wasn't even possible to <laughs> to date them. Have you been able to reach them since? No. But they, I, I, they, didn't, they didn't tell me who it was. Uh, 
No. What do you make of the fact that so many people say that they have a hard time being Jewish and finding somebody decent and Jewish these days compared to like, I haven't been on a date in 28 years because I got married, right? And I wouldn't know what it's like. But why is it so hard for Jewish people, Jewish young people to find somebody? I think with the modern age, uh, this idea that we can always find better, that it's very easy to just, you have so many options. You know, you go on the apps and you see one guy is, is hotter than the other. And you're thinking, okay, well, this guy doesn't align with everything that I say than Cindy Ao. But the the reality is that it's, I think back in the day, it wasn't like that. When I hear my parents talking, you know, it was my parents met uh, through, actually through someone, they were match made and they went out and they didn't really have any other options. And they said, okay, you know, pretty much works for me. That's it. And they made a marriage out of it and they were very happy. Um, but today we, we just, we, it's like, it's like everything. It's also like products. We have too much choice and it messes with our heads. There's also maybe less opportunities to socialize because the last three years, everybody's been locked down in COVID. Maybe not so much in Israel, but at least... Especially in Canada. (laughs) Right, especially in Ontario. Lots of people have given me suggestions on what to ask you because they have, you know, questions. And and so I want to just try to get one of them in at least before I ask my own. And that is about some of the catchphrases that Aliza, the matchmaker, uses. When she says, date him till you hate him. How did that that sit with you? And, And does it make sense? At the beginning, I was like, what? Why would I want to date someone until I hate them? And then kind of got into my head. You know, it's like I was going on dates and I realized, oh, do I hate them yet? You know, <laughs> like, is it is it at that point where um, I think the, the point of it is not really date till you hate them. It's kind of the idea of why it's it's questioning yourself why do you want to break up with this person is it because you truly do not like this person or is it because you're just kind of self-sabotaging or you think that you can find something better or you're just bored um so it, the idea i think is mostly to put back uh your your train of thought and kind of ask yourself why am i doing this did that sort of change the way you look at dating life by following aliza's advice and going through this journey and if so how i did de- i yes yeah, so i definitely follow a lot of her advice um Maybe not the date until you hate him one, but uh, she made a special rule for me, as she likes to tell me, that uh, I have to, um, I have a habit of uh, breaking up with men quite easily, apparently, as she's told me. And uh, one of the th- one of the rules now that I have to do is I have to call her and uh, break up with her first, and then she's the, she's the guy I'm dating. And then we can talk about whether or not it's a valid reason, meaning, is it something that I'm just doing again? because I want to run away from it or is it is it like that our values don't align or is it she, it's kind of like she she's a coach she's a dating coach and well uh, I definitely follow a lot of the advice that she's given me for sure UJA's Walk with Israel is happening this Victoria Day, Monday, May 22nd. Join thousands of community members for the world's largest Israel Solidarity Walk, followed by an epic Israeli-themed beach party to celebrate Israel's 75th birthday. Get all the details by visiting walkwithisrael.com. This is our moment to unite as one strong and proud Jewish community, religious and secular, left and right, Jews and allies. Everyone belongs at the Walk with Israel. Register before May 19th, and if you use the promo code CJN, you can save 10% on all Walk Bundle packages. To register, visit walkwithisrael.com. Some people have also watched the show, all eight episodes, and they said, you know, you have to be Jewish to get some of the references and yeah. qu- like, if you know, you know, and if you don't, then you really don't understand about like some of the things. I'm not sure some of the words or some of the slang. Do you feel that this is a, a show that explains what how amazing Jewish people actually and normal they are or like what? How does it portray Jewish people in your view? So I definitely got that criticism as well. And I think that um, because sometimes we, we, we don't realize that we say things that the outside community might not understand. And I was trained to always, you know, to be a spokeswoman. So a lot of things that I say, I explain after because I know that people just don't get it and they they really just don't know. Um, but it was very, because they, they normalized uh, a lot of just Jewish things or even Israel and, and things like that. So I think they, they didn't even notice that they had to explain some things 
a lot of, I know sometimes they go like half Hebrew and half English and things like that. And a lot of my non-Jewish friends messaged me and told me, oh, what does this mean? And I've been Googling for the last 15 minutes. Uh, so I, you know, I, I definitely, I definitely understand that. Okay. How does having a show like this um, represent Jewish people on this huge scale that maybe, you know, yeah. you're a Hasbarab type of person, right? So... So I think that the show did a really amazing job at representing religious and Jewish diversity, um, all the way from Orthodox to Reform. And you have Sephardim and Mizrahim and Ashkenazim. You really have everything. And I really like kudos to Netflix uh, for really trying their hardest to get out there and get the diversity. Um, and I, I really appreciate that. I think it's they really showed a wide range of Jews that I think haven't been shown um, in Hollywood at all. Uh, you know, like I said, like 15 years ago, to have someone like me on the show, someone of like a Sephardic heritage would, would have been very, it wouldn't, it probably wouldn't have been uh, done. But so I, I I'm very, uh, very proud of them for, for that. And I think, again, it, it does a wonderful job at uh, representing Jews from like just very, just normalizing Judaism and then normalizing Israel as well, which I think. I, I'm, I think they did a wonderful job at that. Did you ever date anybody who wasn't Jewish in your life? Me, no. Yeah. A hardcore right here. <laughs> because I know that I'm very emotional and I know that I would definitely start having feelings for them. And then what happens when I want to keep Shabbat and I want to keep kosher and I want to, you know, I believe in God and they eat bacon and then I get annoyed. Um, so I knew that, you know, and like I said on the show, I, I said that American Jewish is very important for me because I want to be a part of the miracle that continues um you know Judaism and so for me I just I just cut that out right away I'm not going to get myself into a heartbreak just you you moved to Israel from Canada so let's take a bit of a step back and tell us a little bit about your Canadian journey you moved here when you were six to Toronto yes exactly so what was your high schools and and where did you guys live uh, so we moved, I moved with my family in 2000. I was about uh, six, six years old. So I basically grew up in Canada was most of my life. Um, we lived in Thornhill, uh, you know, classic Jewish uh, area. And I went to Frechet, I went to French Immersion, then I went to Langstaff Secondary School. Uh, then I went to Glendon in University, so the French campus of York. Um, and then I worked, I, I worked as in the Israeli consulate as uh, head of public diplomacy for Toronto and Western Canada, uh, which I got to travel to Edmonton for that, which was fun. Um, so I, y you know, Canada, big part of my life. So now that you've got over 18,000 followers on Instagram, how many did you get since the show started? Uh, good question. I, I'm not 100% sure, but I would say definitely a couple thousands. Yeah, it's definitely helped a lot. I was, I was doing social media before. Um, that's just my job. And it's given me a nice little, a nice little push and more exposure, which has been great. I wanted to say, you know, you were mentioning that the show was filmed last year, but it's coming out as Israel's in the middle of turbulence with not just today's latest, but the pro-democracy and anti-government uh, protests. Um, have you been participating in any of those? What are your What are your feelings about that? I have not been participating in uh, in the protests. For me, I think. What I what I, was the most important and what I've been uh, during all this time uh, is promoting Jewish unity and, um, you know, Jewish. For me, what was very difficult is seeing Jews fight with one another. And as I like to say, I live right across from the Supreme Court in Jerusalem and uh, I saw pro pro uh, reform and anti reform demonstrations. And I couldn't tell the difference. They were both with an Israeli flag as they were both singing songs and they were both dancing. And that's my main message is that um you know, whatever side you're on at the end of the day, we're Jews and we need to be united and we need to really, really fight, like not fight within each other and just kind of try to find a solution that will work for for all of us um, without, you know, tearing each other apart. So diaspora Jews though, are very divided and very worried. And, and I'm sure you hear because your folks who <laughs> live in Toronto about, you know, people here are also divided families are divided does that does that resonate with you as well are you aware of that uh yeah for sure i think there's a lot but that's what i've been trying to combat on my instagram is the division um and we've always sort of been divided that's you know the reason we lost the temple uh in ancient times and so 
the but at the same time i think it's also not as bad as as it's portrayed um and it's kind of like when there's a war here and people are like oh my gosh it's a war zone meanwhile people are also sipping cocktails uh on the beach so okay i know we need to end off but i i wanted to ask because you disclosed it on one of your instagram posts that you're going to do a reveal about your relationship status has that happened yet or when is that no happening? because i just want to give time for people who haven't watched the show yet to kind of catch up so i'm going to wait a little bit longer but i will do a reveal quite soon ish uh, and then now, I guess with everything going on, it's kind of been pushed back. Um, but uh, but you you'll have to stay tuned. Not going to say for good or bad. <laughs> well, you did say you have somebody, not the one from the show. Uh, you're getting fan mail. For, are you getting people like guys reaching out to you that want to date with you because they've seen you on the show? He, can I? Pre- I I've, I've actually gotten an email of a dad saying, "This is probably your first email from a Jewish dad." Uh, but here's my son, and then he sends me all these photos. I think that's so sweet. <laughs> yeah, it's very. I feel like that's something my dad would do. So I'm not, you know, I just kind of laugh. Listen, you know, parents are, are, we can't help it. You know, we want our kids to be happy and, and find the right bashert or, uh, or something I'm close honestly, to it, right? Kudos, kudos to them because they know our generation is not going to message someone. This is a little awkward. It's especially when someone on TV, like it's awkward. Um, so they let the parents do it and then it's just cute. <laughs> Any messages for folks back in Canada? I, w- I I really wish that they had said that I was, uh, I moved to Israel from Canada because, um, Canada, it was number four in Canada and that's a really big deal. And I, I wish that people had known that there was at least a Canadian on the show. It's funny because a few people messaged me saying, oh, we can tell by the accent. <laughs> So at least there's that, but um, I, I definitely uh, want to tell them that uh, I miss the 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 I miss Toronto. I miss the community. I think uh, you know I'm very happy to be in Israel, but um, just to, I I guess the message would be to continue having a vibrant and uh, strong community, Jewish community in in Toronto and in Canada. And if you guys want to do a screening and an event, I'll be there. So. It was really an honor to speak with you. Uh, yeah, congratulations you so again. And uh, I'm looking forward to what comes next for you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And thank you for the interview. And that's what Jewish Canada sounds like for this episode of the CJN Daily, sponsored by Metropia. Integrity, community, quality, and customer care. Today's listener shout out goes to Risa Kaplan of Thornhill, who won the first copy of David Matlow's book of Israel at 75. We put the links in our show notes if you want to follow Cindy Senny on all of her social media. I'm off to Montreal this weekend to see my mom and sister for Mother's Day. And together we're going to go see the film Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. Should be fun. Talk to you next week. 